Hi, I'm Lisa Van Gammert, and I'm excited to share some Christmas books with you. Now, I'm going to start with board books, and then I'm going to move on to others. If you're not interested in board books, you can skip ahead. I've got a little stack for you. So this first one is a familiar Christmas story, The Night Before Christmas by Clement Seymour. This one is illustrated by Bruce Watley, and the illustrations are really strong. They're really quite good. If you see, I'll hold them up here. Um, the I love the way that each stanza, each four line stanza has a two page spread. It's really quite well done. It's published by Harper Festival and I picked it up in line at, um, at Marshall's in what I call the gauntlet. You know, when you're like checking out and they make you walk by all those things you never knew you always wanted. Um, that's where I picked this up. They sometimes have very good prices on board books there. So if you want a board book version of the classic tale, this is an excellent choice. Next is one of a couple of singing books I have for you. This one is called Jingle Bells. It's written and illustrated by Nicholas Slater. Well, I guess she didn't really write it because it's the song Jingle Bells, but she illustrated it. This book has an on off because it has a battery. If you turn the battery off when you're done, if you turn it off, it'll last. And let me tell you how I know. Yeah, it's all like this is not new. Um, every page you push the note and it plays the part of the song that's on the page. The next page is my favorite because it's got a little sax. Friends, I'm in the mood. So this, but I am in the mood for Christmas. So Jingle Bells by Nicholas Slater, really cute words to song. It doesn't have that many pages because it needs to have all this space here for the music to be made. But this two page spread at the back is like everything. I love the vintage. It feels almost like a stylized Richard Scarry to me. Really love it. Okay, next, where's the snowman? So the reason I'm sighing is because I love this illustrator. So. I don't know how to pronounce her last name. I've looked it up on the internet. I've tried to practice it, and every time I just butcher it. But it's Ingela Arhenwies. I'm not sure how to say it. Someone with the same last name like won the Nobel Prize or something, so I should be able to say it, but somehow I can't. In any event, someday she's going to come to my house, and she's going to say, you are my biggest fan. Let me tell you how to say my name. So this is part of her Where's the Blank series of Lift the Flat books that are made with felt. My favorite is Where's the King. This one is Where's the Snowman? And so it has all these Christmas things. Where's the Angel? And you lift the bell. Here it is, right? Where's the Gingerbread Cookie? Here it is. They're all so cute. Where's the Cardinal? Here it is. And where are you? And they all end the same way with a mirror and the baby can look at them. These are very sweet, perfect, early, early reader books. And so it's lovely to have one for Christmas. So again, Where's the Snowman by Ingela Arhenwis, Ar, Arhenwis, Arhen, Ingela. Next, this is part of that Finger Wiggle Book series, they make a number of them where you put your fingers through and they become a part of the illustration. This one is called Merry Little Christmas. It's written by Sally Symes and it's illustrated by Nick Sherratt and, or Sherratt, Sherratt. I don't know how to say his name either, apparently. I would say Sherratt, but I bet he says Sherratt, like, because that sounds cooler, right? Nick, hit me up. Let me know how to say your name. All right, so this little fairy has glittery wings. Wiggle, wiggle, twinkle, twinkle. So there's some little onomatopoeia, there's some movement. Every page, there's an elf, and then at the end, you get to be Santa. So these little finger wiggle books are fun for toddlers because they're old enough to stick their fingers through. And if you have two kids, it's fine because they can stick their fingers through both sides, obviously. It goes on both sides. So Merry Little Christmas, Sally Symes, and Nick. Sherat, share it. Nick. Nick and Ingela, my friends. All right, this is the second one of the singing book songs. Sing along with me, Jingle Bells, illustrated by Yu Huswan Huang. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness, me butchering the names. H-U-A-N-G is the end, but I feel like I read, I, I feel like, I feel like the order of names 
may be backwards, so maybe that's the first name and not the last name, but no, we'll we'll go with it. You, it's you, you, why you, you, who swan, who, swan, H-S-U-A-N. That's just not a sound that we really have in English, and so that's why I'm butchering it, and that's my story, and I'm sticking to it. I'm going to be able to promise everybody, I'm going to be able to pronounce everyone else's name, and I'm making that promise to you right now. All right. Sing along with me, Jingle Bells. This one is so fun because it's you pull these flaps and the illustrations by the person whose name I butchered are truly a delight. A lot of times when you pull a flap, you see one little tiny thing, but not here. Here you get like you pull the barn door and there's like all the animals in the barn. It's so sweet. It's really precious. And here you've got this sleigh and you can make it drive. And then on one of the pages I like because it spins. I know you're like, how old are you, Lisa? And you are enjoying these board books. But you know what? Well done board books are good for any age. Unless you're my granddaughter. She thinks they're a snack. All right. Busy Bear Snow Sports. The reason I'm recommending Busy Bear Snow Sports is because if you want to give a gift to someone but they don't necessarily celebrate Christmas, this one is winter or snow but not Christmas. So in it, it has a nice strong rhyme that that heavily metered rhyme that we're used to. Busy bear, busy bear, to the snow. Busy bear, busy bear, off we go. You know, and again with the slidey things. And this one is funny because when it moves, like usually something kind of funny happens. This is another one you get to spin. Ah. And this is by Benji Davies. Thank you, Benji, for having a name I can say. And I have a hard name. I'm so sympathetic to it. Have you heard my last name? Van Gammert. Van Gammert. Say that five times fast. All right. This book is called Bear Looks for Santa Claus. And I love this little board book. This is a part of a series of books called Tiny Tab Books. These tiny tabs pull out. They're on both sides. So you see a picture on this side. And when you pull it out here, you see a picture on this side as well. Um, I like them. I do want to say one little thing. And that is that the first time you pull the tabs, they're kind of hard to pull. So if you're reading this with a little kid, you're going to need to pull it a few times yourself to loosen it up. I think it's just in the construction of the book, it makes it tight. This one is sweet because this little bear is looking for Santa everywhere. Like, is Santa building a snowman? No, but deer and fox are. Is Santa doing some baking? No, but dog and mouse are. Is Santa in the living room? No, that's bear's mom and dad. I think they just gave it away. And then, so it goes all the way through. It's like, is that where he is? No. Is that where he is? No. So Bear Looks for Santa Claus by Ben. Oh, this isn't Benji. The last one was Benji Davies. This one is Jenny Ho. Um, Jenny Ho, Bear Looks for Christmas. Also, delight. Next, Emma Dodd, Christmas is Joy. Emma Dodd is one of my favorite board book authors and illustrators. I love her illustrations. They're really beautiful. This one is a story of a reindeer parent and child learning the true meaning of Christmas. I'm turning the page because I want to find the illustration that has the northern lights. I just absolutely love this one. See the northern lights on it. So pretty. But there's also some others that are really beautiful, like here by the water. Just so nice. So I love this one. It is The text rhymes and it is sweet. And the book itself is well constructed. It's got that kind of soft cover that some board books have, and that one does. The last board book I have for you is one that's so cool that I actually have two copies of it myself in my house. This book is called Christmas Street, and it is written by Jonathan Emmett, and it's illustrated by my friend Ingela. Mm -hmm. There are three cool things about this book. It ties like this with the yellow ribbon because it's not your normal book. This book unfolds and it becomes an eight foot long street of stores. Look at this, like an eight foot long street of stores. And that's not all. Every, every one of the places, this must be the one I haven't looked at a lot. Um, T is for toys that will make nice surprises. And this is the store, Terrific Toys. And the, there's, S is for snowflakes in all shapes and sizes. And so there's flaps and the fold, and it's an alphabet book. So Q is for quilt spread over a bed. R is for reindeer who draw Santa's sled. So it's a rhyming alphabet, lift the flap, fold out, tie with a yellow ribbon book. 
You don't see that every day, right? You can set this thing up. Again, eight feet of Christmas village goodness. And the illustrations are so cute. I mean, Ingela's illustrations are just, the, the style of them is a delight. They're just delightful. So anyway, that is Christmas Street. And that's the end of the board books. Now I want to share just a small segment of books that we have for Christmas that I think a lot of people may not think of as being a place to get Christmas books, but you can find them and you can often find them used for very good prices. And that is Little Golden Books. So Little Golden Books has a number of Christmas books. I don't have anywhere near all of them, but I want to show you some of the ones that we do have. We have the Christmas Bunny. This is one about uh, the Easter Bunny trying to kind of photobomb Christmas, and it's it's really cute. It's a cute little story that brings the two holidays together. That one's good. Then uh, this is the Christmas Story, so this is a religious one. This one is based on the Disney movie, Mickey's Christmas Carol. You can see I bought this for 50 cents at Half Price Books. This one is another Disney one, Donald Duck's Christmas Tree, and you can find these golden books sometimes at half price books if you have half price books or used bookstores also obviously like on ebay or thrift books thrift books is where i buy like not sponsored i just love thrift books um thrift books i have their app on my phone and i'm constantly just looking for books i want if a book gets recommended i just add it to my cart and sometimes they go right and then they're not there but another seller might have it it'll be fine but i love thrift books if you if you're looking for a place to buy books you don't necessarily want to buy from like a very large online retailer, then then you might want um, thrift books. Try thrift books. Next, Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer, another one, cute, kind of has that same look as the old kind of vintage illustrations. The Cat That Climbed the Christmas Tree is a fun one, especially if you have a cat who climbs Christmas trees, which does happen. And then um, a version of Clement C. Moore's um, the Night Before Christmas, and this one is illustrated by Kathy Wilburn, and the snow one is my favorite drawing in the whole book. These little golden books are such a nice step up for young readers. My favorite, I say for last, this book is called Noel. This book is written by Romeo Muller and illustrated by Bill Langley, and it is absolutely our favorite. It is about a Christmas ornament named Noel who has a happiness because when he was being made the glass blower heard the news that his daughter had given birth to a baby and he was so excited and he cried with joy and a tear ran down his cheek and into the ornament he was blowing and that became the ornaments happiness and it is such an adorable story um, that's one that our families enjoyed for years so Noel Noel, like if any of my kids see this video, I know they're going to be like, oh, Noel, it has a happiness, right? Love it. Okay, let's look at picture books. Now, friends, there are so many picture books for Christmas. How did I choose? What I did was I tried to choose an assortment of books that have a strong message mixed with books that have beautiful illustrations, books that capture the Christmas spirit, books that can create memories being read together, books that offer something kind of special, some that make very good read alouds. So one thing I would say is, I don't think you need all these board books. I don't think you need all the little golden books. If I were going to start from scratch and create a Christmas book library, these picture books are the ones I would start with. So if you know someone very, very well, like let's say a sibling or something, or a child is going to have a baby and you want a wonderful Christmas gift for them, this set of these would be astonishing and give them like their whole Christmas book library ready to go. They are not in any particular order. I will share them with you. The Christmas Miracle of Jonathan Toomey written by Susan Wojcikowski is absolutely terrific. My copy came with a CD. I'm guessing now it probably just has a link to where you can listen to it read aloud. This is illustrated by PJ Lynch and PJ Lynch is one of the great children's illustrators working today. Uh, her illustrations are works of art, absolutely exquisite. This story tells of Jonathan Toomey. The Christmas Miracle of Jonathan Toomey is about, wait for it, Jonathan Toomey, who is a curmudgeon 
who has had a tragedy happen that has made him very sad at Christmas time, and then how the Christmas spirit um, brings him back to life. One of the things I love about this book is that in this picture, the little boy is concentrating and he's sticking his tongue out. And that is a hereditary thing that people in my family do. And even my baby infant granddaughter does that when she's thinking she sticks her tongue out. And it's one of the things I love about this book. This book really shows the power of healing and love. And it's it's a really nice book. It is longer. It's a longer Christmas book. So um, it's not for very, very little ones. Next is our family's. Christmas Eve tradition, along with scripture, is the Polar Express. And I think the Polar Express perfectly captures one of the essential things of reading aloud, which is that you've got to use voices. You can't just read aloud in a monotone and expect people to love that, right? You want to use voices. And you can't be worried that you're going to sound silly. Now, if you've seen the movie, you kind of, you know the story. If you haven't seen the movie, then you're in for a treat because this book is so good. And I, I don't, I don't need the movie. I don't need the movie. I just need this book. So you, again, though, you need to read it with voices. And one of the things I would suggest in trying to become very good at reading aloud is to practice a little bit. If you have more than one child and you need to hold the book out so that more people can see is to practice holding a book like this so that you can keep the page spread open and that you can turn and look to it. So there's a fine balance between being able to see the words. Now, this book is one that I've almost memorized and especially this page, because it's famous in our family. I knew that I could have any gift I could imagine. But the thing I wanted most for Christmas was not inside Santa's giant bag. What I wanted more than anything was one silver bell from Santa's sleigh. And when I asked, Santa smiled. Then he gave me a hug and told an elf to cut a bell from a reindeer's harness. The elf tossed it up to Santa. He stood holding the bell high above him and called out the first gift of Christmas. My family lives for that line. You have to be willing, like I have to be willing to try to sound like Santa. One other little tip, read to the commas. If you'll notice how I said, he stood holding the bell high above him, comma, comma, right? Read to the commas. Now, this book is truly magical. And the end is so sweet. Oops. The end, end is so sweet when it says, at one time, most of my friends could hear the bell, but as years passed, it fell silent for them. Even Sarah found one Christmas, she could no longer hear its sweet sound. Though I've grown old, the bell still rings for me as it does for all who truly believe. Ah goosebumps. All right. Next, Auntie Claus. Now, this is Auntie Claus and the Key to Christmas. I would recommend starting with the original Auntie Claus book. They make a perfect read aloud, especially if you're willing to do the elf by, oh dear, oh dear, you've got to give the elf that. And if you give Auntie Claus a little bit of a French accent, right? So this is Auntie Claus by Elise Primavera. And it's like, darling, right? If you make Auntie Claus sound like darling, um, it's super fun. You and then make the elf sound like, oh dear, oh dear, that little high-pitched voice. This makes for a terrific read aloud. I like Auntie Claus in the Key to Christmas, but if you're going to start with one, again, start with the original Auntie Claus, Elise Primavera, whose name ironically means like spring, but she's writing about Christmas. This book, The Repair Shop, The Christmas Doll, was sent to me by Candlewick to review this year, and I fell in love with it. It's written by Amy Sparks, illustrated by Katie Hickey. And what I love about it, it's a story. It's based on it on a true story. And I just love so much about it. So it's about a little girl who is sent away to the countryside during the Blitz. And I just read The Splendid and the Vile. So this is absolutely perfect. And I'm currently reading The Last Bookshop in London. And so it's just like perfect. But this book, the little girl is sent away to a foster family to avoid being, you know, bombed. And they give her a doll for Christmas. And then she doesn't realize that she's going to get to keep it. It's very sweet, almost like a foster child type sweet story um, with a happy ending. And um, I was a foster parent. So those are close to my heart. 
And at the end, what I love is it tells the true story of the Christmas doll. And it's based on a true story. It has a picture of the doll. And then it has um, the story of the people who fixed the Christmas doll and who restore dolls. And so I just love that. I think this would make a beautiful book flight with Mercedes and the Chocolate Pilot, which is a book about a little girl living in Berlin during the Berlin airlift after World War II. And so I think I think those two would make a lovely gift set is Mercedes and the Chocolate Pilot that could be read any time of the year with the Christmas doll for Christmas. Again, by Amy Sparks and Katie Hickey, a, a delightful book. Uh, the illustrations... I just love. There's like so much detail, so many things to look at. Really sweet. Published by Candlewick. Okay, this is another one illustrated by PJ Lynch, who I mentioned earlier. I'm a huge fan. So this book is O. Henry's The Gift of the Magi. What I love about PJ Lynch's illustrations is how detailed they are, just how much there is to see. And and you can just look at the pictures for hours. This story of giving and is is a classic. If you haven't, if you want to see me teach it, I'll link that video below where I teach a whole class on it for kids um, and analyzing the story from like an English teacher perspective. But in a family, it's a it's a truly beautiful story, the quintessential classic Christmas tale. So, and this version I love because of PJ Lynch's illustration. Now, one thing that's sometimes fun is to give kids Christmas books based on storylines that they like at other times of year. And so here's a good one, which is Merry Christmas, Curious George. Now this one I got at Kohl's, um, I don't know when, a year, two, three, 10 years ago, I don't know. Let me see when it was published. And it was one of those 2006. So I'm sure it's still around because I know I got it after that. Um, and I'm sure you can find an old copy of it. But Merry Christmas, Christmas George is super fun for kids who love Curious George. Now, you know, I said that these kinds of books where the kid likes that series make a good Christmas book. I'm not necessarily saying that you need this in your Christmas canon. I'm just saying if your child likes any particular series of books, Try to see if there is a Christmas edition of it or a Christmas story related to it. Next is a book that became a Christmas classic, and that is Dasher by Matt Tavares. I, I love this book so much. It's the story of a little brave little doe who met Santa and changed Christmas forever. And the illustrations, let me get to the one I, there There are a couple of them in here that I love so, so much. I mean, this is the quintessential one, right? Where it's the cover illustration. But there are others that are truly beautiful. I just love the sleigh, right? I just love the sleigh. And I love it when they have a big, beautiful spread and only a couple of words. It's very easy to read. Um, it's a sweet story, good for even younger students or children, I should say. Well, not all students. I can't turn the teacher off. Um, this is just um, this is just priceless. And I love that the reindeer's a girl. I think a lot of people like that about that book. But Dasher by Matt Tavares. This book, Silent Night, Holy Night, is a family favorite. We actually have two that are similar. They have something in common. Both of these. Um, this is Silent Night, Holy Night, and I Heard the Bells on Christmas Day have one thing in common, which is that they were done in the special Tabernacle Choir Christmas concert. And so somebody famous is reading them and the Tabernacle Choir is playing. It's truly spectacular. This includes the CD. Of course, if you buy a copy now, it probably has a digital download, but it includes the CD of Walter Cronkite reading Silent Night, Holy Night. This is a story of the Christmas truce of 1914. It is fantastic. I read this. I bet you it has my name in it. No, it, I thought it would because I've had this in my classroom for years. It's a story of these kids going off to war and in World War I. And the illustrations are gorgeous. And then how on Christmas Eve they call a truce. And it's, it's really lovely it's a it's a lovely story and it has in the afterward some information about the christmas truce in case you want to read more but the way that it ends uh, there are some 
there are some um, some lines in this, just the way that it's written. Some of the lines in here are just so evocative and so powerful. It says, in the true spirit of Christmas, one voice, then another joined in. Soon the whole world seemed to be singing. And for a brief moment, the sound of peace was a carol every soul knew by heart. And it has the words to the to the song, Silent Night, Holy Night. And it says, and that's the way it was. One silent, holy night. It doesn't say holy night. It says one silent night almost a hundred years ago. And that's the way it can be as each of us embrace the message of that silent, holy night. And it says almost a hundred years ago. Now it's been over a hundred years. Um, hasn't it? Yeah, it has. Because this was 1914 and we're in 2023. Um, but this was, and this was written in 2003. So absolute, absolute must have in a classic Christmas library. And then similarly, a, a true story of Christmas. Now this one, I heard the bells on Christmas day written by Lloyd and Carmel Newell and illustrated by Dan Burr. This book also includes the DVD. This book is not for younger readers. Now, even though it's a picture book, there's a little bit of traumatic stuff in here because it's the story of Henry Wadsworth Longfellow and how he wrote the hymn, I Heard the Bells on Christmas Day, how he wrote that carol. And there is sadness near the very beginning of the book when his wife, her and this is true, her hoop skirt caught on fire and she died. And so that you may have kids who cannot handle that. And then his son is seriously injured in the civil war and he comes home and he nurses him to health and that's where the the words of the song came from right there is no peace on earth i said and it, like the here in in it you see him nursing his son oh it's so it's so powerful it's such a powerful and touching story and it's it's wonderful to know the backstory of these songs. I mean, I think that would make a wonderful series of books is is like where all these Christmas songs came from if we know their provenance. So I heard the bells on Christmas Day. I recommend, but again, not for our youngest readers who would be um, maybe upset by the wife dying. All right. Now, you know how I'm going to feel about this book, Twas the Night Before Christmas, illustrated by my favorite um Lynch to the rescue again with some beautiful things. Um, so we've got some gorgeous illustrations of the old classic, just truly beautiful. I just don't feel, and this one was sent to me by Candlewick in exchange for an honest review. I just don't think you can have too many copies of this story. I've got like board book copies of it, picture book copies of it, regular copies of it. And then in a twinkling, I heard on the roof. I love the way they've offset the, the couplets. So nice. Um, this is a beautiful edition. I like, um, I have other copies that are like portrait. This is landscape. I like landscape format for picture books sometimes. I love the greens and blues. It's an unusual color choice. Um, it feels almost like the, the Northern Lights have written this book. So Twas the Night Before Christmas, Clemency Moore illustrated by Lynch. All right, next, another one that has become a classic, Little Red Sleigh, words by Erin Gundelsberger and pictures by Elizaveta Tretyakova. I may not be saying either of those exactly right. Gundelsberger, that's how it's, Gundelsberger. Gundel, Gundel. It depends, right? How anglicized is it going to be? In any event, it says, Little Red knew deep in her heart what she could do. She could learn anything. She could be anything. She could even meet Santa and fly. And this Christmas, she is going to prove it. So, this book is about a little red sleigh. And it was Christmas Eve. And look at this little red sleigh. Look at this little red sleigh. So cute. The, it is so adorable. The illustrations are a delight. The story is precious. And the like, I just love all the different ways that the illustrations show. Like if, if you see what I mean here, like that one is in a circle on one side of the page and then this one, like the whole page. So the illustrations are beautiful. 
The story is longer. It's not a super short story. Um, so you'll want a reader who can handle a little bit longer tale. Um, but this Little Red Sleigh, I love it. I also love that it it definitely has, um, uh, like it's definitely a Christmas feel and it definitely has like a realistic feel to it. Like children can feel themselves in this story. So absolutely love, love this book. Next, Merry Christmas, Mr. Mouse. So this one was a cute one. There's always a party at Christmas time. And this book is written by Carolyn Buner and Mark Buner, and or they may say Boehner. And it is published by Dial Books um, for Penguin. I do not think they gave this to me, but maybe they did. So what happens is publishers send me books to review and I don't have to, right? Like it's, it's in exchange for an honest review. I don't get paid for it, um, but sometimes I can't remember if they sent it to me or if I bought it because I buy a lot of books. So what I love about this book is it says, readers, can you find a cat, a rabbit, and a Tyrannosaurus Rex in each painting? And then under the book jacket, they, they give you the answer. And so when you're looking on the pages, you can actually find like these pictures within pictures. So that's so fun. I love the little mouse. And you know, he wrote this, this illustrator, Mark Boehner, he did one of my very favorite children's books. I'm almost 100% sure he illustrated it. They wrote Snowman at Night and Snowman at Christmas. But I feel like he wrote, I want to look this up. I'm going to like go look it up right now because I want to know, did he write? There's a book I love called Harvey Potter's Balloon Farm. And I just feel like these illustrations look just like it. Yes, he did. It is him. I know it. I knew it. I should have looked it up before I started recording. Look, friends, Harvey Potter's Balloon Farm is a masterpiece. All right. So same guy only this time he's writing with his wife look at these illustrations oh my goodness oh my goodness mr and mrs mouse are celebrating in nook 24 christmas so just a delightful little story i love i have another book called christmas mice that i love i didn't show this time but this one merry christmas mr mouse by the Bainers, so good i'm gonna say Boehner. i just hope they say Boehner. if they say buner okay okay mark and Carolyn. All right, my last picture book, Christmas Day in the Morning by Pearl S. Buck. Like O. Henry, a classic story. Like the O. Henry Gift of the Magi, you can also watch me read this book aloud, a video on my channel of me reading this whole book aloud, and also of, um, I think that's all it is, reading this book aloud. But Christmas Day in the Morning, I absolutely love because it's about the true meaning of Christmas. And this is it's also illustrated by Mark Buner Boehner. Um, I need to like call him on the phone, right? The illustrations are exquisitely done. It's the story of a boy living on a farm and in order to give his dad a true gift of Christmas, he gets up super early in the morning before his dad and he does all his dad's chores. And when his dad gets up, he goes out to the barn and all the chores are done. And the boy is like so excited because his dad was so happy with his gift. And I love that it shares like the idea that a true gift is a gift that comes from the heart. So Christmas day in the morning. Oh, love this book so much, so much. You know, so many, so many of these Christmas books are ones that I feel like will find their way not only into your home library, but into your heart and into the memories that you make with your family. Now I have a few more to share, just three more books to share. It can be harder to move from picture books to older books, and there are a few that I find great. This one just came out this year. Um, Merry Christmas, Anna Hibiscus. If you're not familiar with the Anna Hibiscus series, Anna Hibiscus is a little girl living in West Africa, in Nigeria. And the book is written by an, a Nigerian author and um, illustrated by Lauren Tobia. And they're, they're like easy, let me find a page so you can see. This is what it looks like. The publisher says six to nine year olds. I'd say that's probably correct. Um, in this particular one, so there's pictures on every page, but it's not a picture book, right? Um, 
this book is about how Anna Hibiscus is going to leave her home in Nigeria and go to um, Canada to visit her grandmother for Christmas. And it's colder and the people don't look the same and she misses her family and everything is different. But it's a really sweet story. And Anna Hibiscus is a great series. If you're looking for a little series for young readers, it's a good one. Another series. Now, this one I would say is a little older, um, maybe eight instead of six. This is Clarice Bean, Think Like an Elf. If you do not know the joy, the absolute joy that is Lauren Child, I'm, I, someday I'm going to show up at her door. I love Lauren Child. So look at, look at these illustrations. Look at that. Now, here's what's crazy about this book. So this book is about a little girl named Clarice. And she, or her name is Clarice Bean. She lives in a family. And what, okay, there's a couple things. She, she's fun. I've said before that she is like Pippi Longstocking and Amelia Bedelia if they weren't so extra, right? Okay, so here's, here's what's fun. She uses the fonts to style. So there's like the font size will get bigger. It'll go across the page like this, or the font size will get really small, or the letters will go roly poly. And then she also incorporates like collage in the, um, do you see that lollipop? She incorporates like collage in there. So it isn't just illustration, although that would be great too. Like her illustrations are wonderful, but then she has these pictures. Let me show you one at the back. There's a picture of macaroni here. Look at this. Think like elves. Like it's, it's, it's so delightful. So this is what I mean. This is a perfect illustration of an illustration. So Lauren Child, this book, Clarice Bean, Think Like an Elf, is such a sweet Christmas story. It would be a great read aloud. It is um, just precious, like beautifully done, beautiful layout, sweet. Uh, story moves along. I read it quickly. Um, but it is thick. It is thick. It's like 240 pages. So it's thick, but you know, some pages don't have a lot of writing, but look at, ah, uh, so good. So good. If you're looking this, that might be the book the year of the year for me. All right. Then last book. And if you buy no other one, make it this one. This book is called A Family Christmas. It is selected and introduced by Caroline Kennedy. Yes, that Caroline Kennedy. And on the back of it, you can see a photo of the Kennedy family at Christmas time. This book is, um, this book has a lot of stories of Christmas, like E.B. White writing a story. And then it also has, um, some songs like the holly and the ivy away in a manger and then it also has let me get to it like excerpts from longer christmas stories this one is the second of the three spirits from a christmas carol it has poems for christmas it has um, thomas hardy's the oxen poem it has gwendolyn brooks dreams of a black christmas it is just truly exquisite Winter Wonderland um, is, it has some scripture in here. Um, it is just truly delight, some in Latin. It is Christmas Day at Sea by Joseph Conrad, like classic stuff, like so good. This has this beautiful ribbon. I feel like this would make a wonderful Christmas gift for any family, especially for someone who loves Christmas and maybe someone who doesn't have a ton of space for a lot of Christmas books. If you just had this one, this is one that I display at Christmas. It's just out all the time because you can pick it up. You don't have to read it all the way through. You can just pick it up and read a, a single little excerpt. There are some illustrations, um, kind of pen and ink illustrations that are lovely. And I think this A Family Christmas is, is a wonderful thing to wrap up with. So 
Hopefully, you've found an idea for a book or two to add to your Christmas library. And if you have a book, I did now, these are not all of my Christmas books, of course. But if you have a Christmas book that you love that I didn't mention, please drop it in the comments below because we are always looking for good Christmas books, aren't we? So thank you so much for sticking with me. Again, in the, um, in the description, I've got all these books linked and where you can get them if they can be found and all or or where to look for them if they can't just be bought with a single click and then also uh, links to the other videos that i mentioned if you like talking about books or if you're interested in raising or teaching bright kids please make sure to subscribe and if you liked this video would you give it a thumbs up i've never asked for that and people tell me I should. So if you like this video and you could give it a thumbs up, I can't tell you what that would mean to me. It would, it would, it actually would mean a lot. So thank you so much. And I hope that you have a Merry Christmas in your Christmas library.